All right guys, welcome back to Beanie's Hobbies. And in this video, we're gonna be having another look at the Corality Ender 6. So I've had this machine up and running now for a while, doing some test prints with it, going over it, seeing if there's any issues with it. Discovered a couple of things, nothing major, but we'll go into that shortly. First of all, we'll just take a look at some of the prints that I've printed off so we can have a look at the quality. So first up, obviously, as always, we have to print a vase to see what it came out like. And as you can see, quality-wise, is actually very, very good. You might be able to see if I can get the camera to focus. Now at the top here, you can see it's not quite smooth. But down the bottom it is. But I will tell you why that happened shortly but apart from that we've had no under extrusions no over extrusions everything is absolutely spot on with that print now these next few pieces were all printed support free so i wanted to check out what the cooling was like so no supports were used at all to print any of these and as you can see i've got my camera to focus we had no issues with cooling, not on this particular model anyway. This was printed uh, with glow-in-the-dark PLA. It came out incredibly well. Like I say, this was printed support-free, so no supports were used at all. And the detailing... I would say is very, very acceptable. And then the next piece we had Batman. Yeah, again, this was support free. Now, he didn't come out brilliantly. We've got a few places you can see here where the cooling just wasn't quite good enough. It's not horrendous by any means, this is a perfectly usable piece. And a good example here is on the bottom of his belt. I mean, I'm just saying it's worse than what it is. You see the cooling wasn't too great on his sharp tips. But like I say, no supports. I mean, probably if you actually used a bit of support on this, probably absolutely fine. But nothing, a little tiny bit of sandpaper wouldn't solve, you know, if you were going to paint it. But I don't plan on painting this because I quite like the glow in the dark. Batman figure standing on, on my workbench at night time glowing away. So another very, very acceptable print. I've had a lot worse prints from other printers. It actually came out quite well. Hey, next up, Mr. Astronaut here yet again. Support free. Um, so he had a few sort of issues here on the ends of his fingers. Same this side. Uh, a few issues at the bottom here of his on his pack. I mean, like I say, if you had printed him with supports, he wouldn't have had any problems at all. But it's a very, very, very acceptable print. Um, this was obviously done in silk green. PLA, it was quite an old reel of you know, PLA I actually had sitting around, so um this print probably would have come out a lot better if I'd have used a new reel, but just for test prints. You know, none of these are really going to be kept apart from the Batman. Um, these were just mainly for testing purposes, but that is another acceptable print. And finally, just printed this little storage box. It's yet again, support free. As you can see, this one came out exceptionally well, even on the small part here on the clip. Really nice and smooth and flat, there's no gaps. There's a slight bit of warping, but I didn't print this with a brim or anything, so there was a slight, slight little bit of warping. But yet again, very, very, very acceptable print. Getting on quite well with this printer. Now, this printer is incredibly quick, it is very, very fast at printing. But with speed comes a problem, noise. Now they're quoting that this thing is supposed to be ultra silent. It really isn't. 
Um, if you're printing at slow speeds, then yeah, it is. It is very, very quiet. But you don't buy a Core XY printer to print at slow speeds. Um, if you want to print at slow speeds, you would just use a normal printer that doesn't take up so much room as this. Um, so yeah, printing at anything sort of over 60 you know, millimeters a second, you are going to be getting a lot of noise. Um, the Vars Hair printed this at 100 millimeters a second. Like I say, quality wise was brilliant, but it is very, very noisy. Doesn't actually help that I haven't got this on a 100% solid surface, but that's not really causing much noise. So printing at high speeds with this machine does create a lot of noise, be warned. It's not the sort of thing you'd want in your bedroom when you're trying to sleep, that's for sure. Um, only other slight issue I've had, I, I'm gonna have to detach you from the tripod, is with the Bowden tube. Now, the bracket that's up on the top here isn't big enough to actually fit the sleeve in which holds the cabling. Now, and obviously then your Bowden tube is zip tied to it and because it's quite weighty, it, what it does, it pulls it over and then it will sort of stretch your Bowden tube and then your filament will snag and that's what causes those problems you could see earlier on on the vase. Now what I have done is I have reinforced it with a small little piece you can see just here. You know, this is actually a cover, back panel cover off a computer which I've just slid down, bolted behind this bracket, a couple of zip ties and that actually holds it up perfectly and that solved that problem for me. But if not, see on the other end, let me show you, move this out of the way. On the other end I have managed to squeeze it in there and clamp it shut. But it's not possible to do it on this end, it just won't fit. It just won't squish up and fit in there enough. So that is another slight issue. You know, you guys are gonna need to come over with a little sort of work around to hold that in place. Because like I say, if you don't, the weight of this will just pull your Bowden tube over and will squash your filament and stop your filament from feeding properly. So that is something to keep in mind. So that's the only two gropes I have about this. One is the noise, two is this sort of bad design. This clamp ideally needs to be made wider so you can then push this down and fit it inside. But for me for now, this little bit, small bit of metal that I've slid down in here, clamped on, is working absolutely fine. Now apart from that, they are the only two concerns that I have with this printer. Quality wise, excellent print speeds are absolutely phenomenal. This thing can easily print up to 150 millimeters a second, um, as long as you can put up with the noise. Um, it, is, it is a fantastic machine, but like I say, it's big, it's huge, it's heavy, takes up a lot of room, and the bill plate, in all fairness, isn't all that big. I don't know why they didn't increase the bill plate a little bit. You know, you've got all this room inside this machine with this quite small bill plate. Um, now, if you're looking for a printer that prints fast and doesn't look too bad, then, you know, go for this. But if you're not really worried about printing at quick, fast speeds, this is probably something that you might not want to go for. Um, just the fact that it's so noisy. Now the other thing that this video I want to discuss is about BL Touch. Now, there are a few videos on the net about installing BL Touches into this machine. I have actually already installed a BL Touch. As you can see into this machine. Now it's not a difficult job, it was very simple. Um, the only thing you're going to need for this is obviously a BL Touch. Now this one here, that I've, this is the same one that I've got in the machine. This is a, uh, my camera is not going to focus on that. Anyway, this is a version 3.1 BL Touch. And then the only thing you're going to need, you aren't, don't need to print yourself any brackets because up inside, hang on, 
Let's just take you back off the tripod again. He says, let's take you back off the tripod again. Now up inside where the BL Touch sits, there's already bracket pre-installed. So basically all you need to do is just screw in your BL Touch into the two mounts that are already installed up in the top of the hot end. So no printing of brackets or anything like that is required, so that's nice and simple. The only problem you will have, guys, is with the cables. Now the cables, when you buy a BL Touch, will, be, will vary. You'll get your small end, which plugs in your BL Touch, and then depending on what the other end is, you might have a bigger block like this, or you might have the smaller pins. Hang on, I just wanted to pad earlier. On the other end of your BL Touch, you're more than likely to have a cable that looks like this. Now obviously those are going to be no good to you. What you need is the small end that plugs into the BL Touch. You need this on both ends of your cable. So you're either going to have to go and see if you can find the cable with this end on both ends, or you can buy yourself another cable cut the end off and then obviously cut the end off on the other one okay sorry guys I had a quick change of camera angles so like I was saying the small end you will need on both ends of your cable so obviously one small end can then plug into your BL touch and then the other small end will then plug into Oh, hang on, please, I go from underneath. The other small end will then plug into the board in the back of your printer. Now, obviously, what you need to do is you need to make sure the coloured wires are all the right way around. So, let me just show you now. So, when you wire this up yourselves, you're going to have it the right way around. So, you're going to need to have your white wire on the right, followed by black yellow, red, and then blue on the left. So when this is plugged into the board, okay, the white wire is pointing straight towards you from the front. Then obviously on the BL touch, you'll then need to make sure the wires are the same way around. Okay, now because if you look at this cable, you'll see that the blue and the red are actually the wrong way around. But that's quite easy to change. Just stick you guys down here for the minute. All you'll need to do is get yourself a little tiny small screwdriver. And just get this to focus. Just lift up the little plastic tabs and the wire will pop out. Swap them around, push it back in. That's all you need to do. So you obviously then, once you've done that, your BL touch your BL Touch will then be functioning correctly. So I can then show you by just powering up the printer. As you can then see, your BL Touch will be powered up. Now at this stage, obviously you haven't got the correct firmware on your printer. So you'll need to go to your computer. All right guys, head over to your computer, go to Corality3dofficial.com. You're gonna to need to go to support. You wanna to go to firmware download. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to click, select obviously end of series. And then you're gonna to wanna to select end of six. And there is your firmware dated the 7th of September, 2020. Ender 6 version 1.0.2 BL Touch firmware. Okay, so it's going to download that. Okay, then what you're going to need to do is put that onto an SD card. Now, preferably, you don't really want to use the one that came with the printer. You're going to want to use one that has nothing on it. And then pop that back into your printer, fire the printer up, and that will install the firmware. And then you are up and running, ready to use your BL Touch. Now on a side note, obviously don't forget to remove the original end stop switch. 
it's two screws that hold it in and then you just unplug it out of the board at the back keep that for later just in case you need it and then obviously when you then go into your settings and into your leveling This machine has homed itself. Okay, you'll be ready to set it up. Now setting it up is very simple. Now you'll see your Z offset. So you need to slide a piece of paper under the nozzle. Move your Z offset up or down until the nozzle, you know, you can feel a little bit of resistance on the paper. Click your home button and that'll then store the setting. Then you need to go into your measuring. And away you go. This is quite a lengthy process, as you can see. If my camera will focus, it's going to measure 25 points on your build plate. So once this is done, that I shall return. It's not the quickest of jobs, but you know. Once it's probed 25 spaces, and then you're then left with your measurements. And the auto bed levelling is done. Now, one thing I will notice with this firmware, it won't save any of these. So what you're going to need to do is make sure your auto levelling is enabled. So what that will do at the start of every print, it will level the bed for you. Because when you turn this machine off and then turn it back on again, all of these will all reset back to zero. So, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't save anything. It just doesn't. Okay, so just remember, auto leveling on. So it'll do it at the beginning of every print. If not, you're gonna have to level this machine. Don't obviously forget to level it before you do your print, because if not, you're gonna get all sorts of really weird prints going on. So that is the VL Touch installed on the Creality Ender 6. It all works. It's all been tested. Everything is absolutely fine with it. Like I say, they could do with tweaking the software a little bit so it actually saves these figures because currently it doesn't. And really, that is about all I have to say on this printer. It's big, it's heavy. Bill plate isn't that big. Quality prints prints ridiculously fast um, it is a nice solid machine don't get me wrong I don't regret buying it I would recommend if the core if you're looking for a core XY machine this is probably one of the better ones that are out there on the market but please do bear in mind once you're printing at sort of high speeds it is quite noisy but apart from that I actually like it. Anyway guys, that's it for me for now for the old Crowley Ender 6. If I have any issues, I will post another video. But apart from that, for me, this one's now put to bed. And I shall crack on with some more printer reviews for you guys. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheerio!